Uh, Jim had gallbladder surgery at another hospital on uh, January the 23rd and some complications happened after that and he was transferred here to the Ottawa hospital on the 25th of January. What struck me walking in, all the machines running and the numbers on them all, all the intravenuses. Septic shock is a problem that occurs when a bug enters our body and when our body's immune system, our inflammation and clotting system, runs out of control. He had suffered a heart attack, his kidneys were affected, and his lungs. And it was a 50-50 chance of survival. That's probably the thing that bothers me most about the whole ordeal was what she went through while I was in a coma. The problem is quite common in the intensive care unit. In fact, it, it accounts for about one in five or 20% of our admissions to the ICU and two to 3% of our hospital admissions. The death from this problem is very high. It runs at around base of 30 to 40%. I was uh, out for so long, I lost a large amount of muscle mass. So that affected me more than anything because I, I couldn't even lift my hands off the bed. It was several weeks before I could uh, hold a glass. At the OHRI um, in Ottawa and in Canada, um, I can say that we have an incredible team of a clinical and translational investigators that are truly committed to making and trying to make this problem better, to make this problem less severe uh, and in save the lives of our patients. Stem cells have never been uh, used or studied in humans with septic shock, so I guess you could say this is a world's first trial. In animal models of sepsis, the data is really exciting because it suggests that these cells in the sepsis model setting reduce death, they reduce organ failure, and they modulate in a big way that inflammatory cascade. But we don't know what's going to happen in humans yet, and that's why we have to take it to the next step. Mr. Graves, fortunately, um, didn't die from his septic shock. He survived, um, but he was in hospital for quite some time rehabilitating from this problem. Despite his initial survival, he is still left with immense struggles with weakness and deconditioning and in some cases these patients can become very de depressed and also develop post-traumatic stress in association with the severe illness. It's not good what happened to me. I'm going to bear the scars for a long time. The hope is absolutely to reduce death, but we also want to improve the quality of the recovery of the patients that survive. So if we can reduce the organs that fail, if we can reduce the amount of patients that go on the kidney machine acutely and then long term, and if we can enhance and uh, accelerate their recovery after their discharge from the ICU so they get back to society, they get back to their baseline, living in their happy lives faster, that would be a major, major success and win for everyone, I think. I'm walking and climb stairs okay. Uh, I even backed the car out of the garage the other day, but uh, it's a long haul and I still have uh, a couple more procedures to go through. I honestly hope that uh, it goes well with the research that they're doing because like I said before it's not something I'd recommend to anybody. If the research, if what they see is happening to me, if they can glean something from that and help somebody else get over the ordeal quicker than I am, then that's the most important part and I'm behind them 100% on what they're doing and I hope they're successful.